Yesterday, we saw stocks rallying to the moon, and now famous investors are starting to sell. Is it time to worry? Are we headed for very bad times in the economy? Because yesterday, Jay Powell basically said, you know what? We're going to be cutting rates in September, and we don't see any problems in the economy. However, I'm going to show you guys why that is false, because we look at this chart right here. Every time the Fed has went on an aggressive rate cutting campaign, the stock market has always suffered a major correction, and this time is going to be no different. If you think this time is going to be different, then why is this famous investor are also starting to sell stocks? We come over and look at the earnings that we have out today. It's going to be a big one. After the bell, we have Amazon, we have Apple, we have Intel, we have Coinbase, just to name a few. And if you thought the Nasdaq had big moves yesterday, what is going to be in store today? Because if Apple and Amazon disappoint, watch out things are going to get ugly. And if they if they surprise, we could be rallying up to the moon. We look at the expected big movers out here for today. And what do we see? DoorDash after the bell, plus or minus 12%. Intel, plus or minus 9%. Amazon, plus or minus 8%. And Apple, plus or minus 5%. Now, Apple is such a large weighting of the indices out there. If Apple has a big move up or a big move down, the stock market is most certainly going to follow suit. Now this morning, the Bank of England cuts rates from 16-year high, but careful on future moves. And you know what? I don't care what they say. We know banks around the world are going to have to continue to cut rates. Why? Because the economy is sick. And no, they're not going to let us know that ahead of time. They're not going to say, guess what, guys? Things are going bad. You better prepare. No, they're going to always try to paint the brightest picture because if people start to panic, that'll already make what is already a slowing down economy 10 times worse. We look at the fear and greed index. We are back in the neutral territory. Yesterday, we were over in the greedy territory for a bit. I'm really surprised we came back in neutral, especially how high all the indices were out there yesterday. Then we look at our famous investor, Warren Buffett, cuts Bank of America stake, sales top three billion. Now, if we come over and we look real quick, we look at a chart of Bank of America. Bank of America has been on a pretty good move on the way up, but if stocks are cheap, like a lot of news articles out there are trying to say, then why is one of the most famous investors out there selling? We know Warren Buffett is a value investor. And if he is selling out here, what else is he selling? And more importantly, why is he sitting on a bunch of cash? Yes, you guessed it right. Warren Buffett knows the stock market is going to be on sale and he wants to make sure he has plenty of cash set aside so we can pick up these companies on a sale. Let's look at some of the other banking stocks. JP Morgan still near the recent high, but yesterday, JP Morgan was down a bit, down 1.1%. Well, what about the KRE, the regional banking ETF? We know they hold a lot of commercial real estate and KRE yesterday was down a whopping 24 cents. Now, let's not forget, even though everything has been seeming so fine with the recent stock market rally, keep in mind, commercial banks are still gonna be a problem. They hold a ton, a ton of commercial real estate. And we know now commercial real estate just is not holding up at this moment. We come over this morning, look at the dollar index, dollar index back on the rise. And we got to ask ourselves, is this a double bottom pattern? Yes, I know we didn't make it all the way down here. So you might say, well, Mike, not truly a double bottom, but maybe a higher low. Now, if indeed we are going to play out to the upside, where might this play out? We can grab our Fibonacci extension tool. We can measure A to B equals C to D. That would give us a price projection up here about 105.45. Now, along with the dollar, we also want to pay attention to what are the yields doing? The yields are trying to bounce back after yesterday's decline on the way down. When the yields rise and the dollar rise, that normally is a headwind out here for the stock market. Then we look at gold out here and what is gold doing? Right now, gold basically went up last night. Coming back down, right now we have a candle of indecision. I still think gold may want to go ahead and break above all-time highs and run all the way up here towards our ABC projection at about 2586.2. Now, yesterday crude oil had a very strong day. Right now in pre-market, we can see crude oil was up a little bit higher up. Now it's trying to come back down. Are we gonna see stocks starting to retreat from yesterday's massive gains? Yesterday, we saw the IWM, the Russell 2000, spike above recent highs only to close near the lows. And in pre-market, we see the IWM is down 36 cents had a shooting star candle. Then we look at the diamonds. The diamonds also had that shooting star looking candle. And the fact that we were able to run up, we did not overthrow the high, boom, came right into our resistance zone, started to come back down. This could be problematic, especially if we start closing below the low of yesterday's candle, 
that could basically tell us that, you know what, may not be such a great picture that they're trying to paint for us, and maybe we're gonna start to see a pullback in the markets. Yesterday, it was all about Nvidia and some of the chip stocks where Nvidia was up 13.29% in pre-market. Nvidia right now is up another 2.55%. AMD yesterday was on the move up higher, but look what AMD did as well. Similar to what we saw with this with small caps and the Dow, where, it, where AMD gapped up higher, ran, ran up, but was unable to hold those higher prices and actually closed near the lower third of the range. This is not a good look. If everything is so good with AMD as they had earnings coming out, why is it not able to hold on to these higher prices? Are the other stocks and indices about to follow suit? Because when we look over here at the QQQs, Yesterday, a big bullish push off, basically a double bottom pattern. Now, if indeed we are going to go ahead and hit target, the double bottom pattern gives us a price projection of about 482.25. I wanna make everybody aware, Apex 7 a massive 80% sale off all their valuation accounts, pass them as little as one day, and you can also get a 150K account for only $40. You get a 250K account for only $40, and you get a 300K account for only $40. So if you want to take advantage of this offer, use the link in the description box down below and use the promo code Mike at checkout. That would also fill the gap that we have right over here as well. Mac the indicator on the daily chart may be trying to firm up. On the four hour chart, we've already had a bullish cross on the MACD indicator. And on the one hour chart, you can see we've already crossed, we're above the zero line. And now the question is, which gap is gonna get filled first? Will it be the gap down over here? Or is it gonna be the gap that we had yesterday? Now, one thing I do wanna remind you guys though, in between these gaps, we do have points of interest that could act as a magnet. For instance, as we come up and try to fill the gap over here, anywhere from 477.78, to about 478.47 could be a target location we wanna focus on. If we start coming down, trying to fill the gap from yesterday, then I wanna focus on this area, anywhere from 459.81 up here towards 461.40. Now, as we look at the 30 minute chart, yesterday we could see where it looks like we wanna start rolling over, but right now in pre-market, we see the queues are trading above yesterday's high. And I really like this play. If you're looking for a retracement on the way back down, I really like the fact that we're already above yesterday's high. And there's two different ways we can play this. One, if we start coming down below yesterday's high, we can look to target value area high, which comes in at 472.37. Then the next target would be down here at the point of control at 470.60. Then we have value area low coming at 468.57. Now, anything below that, I would wanna target down here towards gap support at about 466.49 then this zone that we just talked about, and then the complete gap being filled. However, if we stay above yesterday's high, there's no need to try to sh jump on the short bandwagon and essentially try to fade the move. Wait and see. The market will give us validation that, yes, we want to go down by at least getting back below yesterday's high. If we cannot do so, there's no need. The market's probably going to go ahead and continue higher. We come over here and we look at the futures markets this morning. What do we see? The NASDAQ came right into our structure breakdown point, which we were talking about last night during the live stream. In case you guys don't know, I stream live Monday through Thursday, 8.45 p.m. If you guys would like to join me, all you have to do is make sure you're subscribed to the channel and you have the bell notifications turned on for all. Now, right now, we are trading above the weekly developing value area high. And we got to ask ourselves, are we going to be able to rally all the way up here, fill in the gap and potentially taking out the untested point of control, or do we start to fade some of the movement from yesterday? Now, in yesterday's five o'clock video, we talked about this minus development area, which comes in at about 19,402. To me, this would be a great location to see, okay, can we start to get a rejection in the market at that area? I mean, do we pull back, starting to find a little bit of support and then try to rally back up? And that could form some type of larger ABC pattern that could take us up towards fill in the gap and that untested point of control. Now, let's just role play this out for a minute. If indeed we're gonna form an A to B equals C to D pattern, if we only come down towards the minus development area, that would give us a price projection up here about 20,404. If we come down to where the point of control is, that would still get us well above the point of control at 20,284. And if we came all the way down the value area low, that would still put us above the point of control. Now, I'm not saying we're gonna make it all the way up there out here this week or even today. But what I am saying is if we start to pull back and we start to firm up, that is a pattern that may take a couple of days to play out, which will give us multiple opportunities to get involved in that move. As we come over and look at the daily profiles, notice what we have, a D is in dog shape profile. And that's what I talked about last night on stream. I expect today is gonna be a D is in dog shape profile. We probe a little bit higher, 
we probe a little bit lower, but we basically just form a Diaz and dog shape profile. Now below us, we do have a point of control from yesterday, which has not been tested, 19,472. You can see we dipped below value area high. We got back above it, but if we start getting back below it again, this is gonna be a target location I would wanna focus on out here this morning, but I also wanna tie this in with the overnight volume profile levels, which are not mature just yet. Now, if we look at the economic calendar this morning at 8.30 a.m., we have the weekly unemployment claims, 9.45, we have final manufacturing PMI, 10 a.m., we have ISM manufacturing PMI, ISM manufacturing prices, and construction spending. So we have a little bit of news to today, but tomorrow is gonna be the big one. Tomorrow is gonna be the non-farm employment change along with the unemployment rate. Now, let me know in the comment section down below, do you guys think the numbers for tomorrow are gonna come out hot, meaning we're gonna blow out the non-farm payroll numbers, or do you think it's finally gonna show a weakening in the jobs market? Now, as we come over and look at the SPY real quick, MACD on the daily chart, trying to firm up near the zero line. Now you can see yesterday, we ran up, we tried to fill the gap, we missed it by a measly, I think 20 ticks or so. But keep in mind, we do have two gaps, right? The first one was almost filled. We have another one up here a little bit higher. On the four hour chart, we did just get a fresh cross of the MACD indicator lines, but the last four hour candle, a candle of indecision. Right now in pre-market, you can see we're trading right near of that wick from yesterday. On the one hour chart, you can see right over here, the MACD indicator above the zero line, we have a separation of the two lines and a bullish alignment. Then we still have this still have this big gap below us. Yesterday, we were able to take out this structure breakdown point. So I'm gonna go ahead and remove that off the chart. And we'll see you know, if we can run up and fill that gap today, or if we're gonna start to go a bit lower. As we look at the volume profile levels, I classified yesterday P as in Paul, and you cannot see you know, part of the P, this part of this gap, I'm considering part of the profile shape. Now you can see we're right now above value area high. We're not above the high from yesterday. So the way I'd wanna play this is if we break below value area high, which comes in at 551.70, I would then wanna target the point of control at 550.91. Then value area low would be the next target at 549.73. But if we get below value area low, maybe come down towards gap support, and then we start coming back above it, I would then want to target the point of control, value area high, and then a retest of the highs and potentially even higher fill in the gap if that takes place. Keep in mind, the volume profile is nothing more than an if-then syntax. If we're above value area high, I should be looking for buy side trades. If I want to be short, let's wait and see. Can the market prove to me that yes, indeed, it wants to start going lower by at least breaking value area high? Now, as we come over and look at the S&P futures markets, what do we see? Well, we still have this gap right over here that has not been filled. We also have this untested point of control at 5610.75, which needs to come back and get tested. And you can see we weren't that far away from filling the gap. And yesterday, that was a very strong move that we saw. We've had a 163 point move from the lows out here on, on Tuesday all the way until last night. It was a straight up move. Now we have a, had a little knee jerk reaction on the way down, but one of the things I do wanna do is I wanna pull my Fibonacci retracement tool. I wanna measure from the swing low to the swing high. Notice where the 38% level comes in. It comes in where? Right near this high volume area. So the question we gotta ask ourselves is, will we get a retracement down towards this area? And where I really like it is this minus development area, which is really towards the bottom end of this high volume area, anywhere from about 55.31 down here to about 55.28. Now, the reason why I say that is, we only come down to there, which is right around the 38% retracement. That would be a minor retracement and what could still be a very bullish move on the way up. Now, where would that take us to if indeed we came down there and we rejected? I wanna grab my Fibonacci extension tool, measure A to B equals C to D, and that would give us a price completion all the way up here at 56.92. That would put us where? Right near all-time highs. And if we get that close to all-time highs, you guys know the drill, we'll probably make another new all-time high. Then as we come over and look at the daily profiles, notice what we did last night. We came up, we hit 55.60.50. We were talking about that level last night on the live stream. And if you look, last night we ran right out of the gate only to falter and start coming back lower. Now, right now we are currently trading above value area high from yesterday, but if we come back down again, I would wanna retarget yesterday's point of control, but I'd also wanna target value area low. Now, one of the areas I'm looking, if we can get some selling in the market, and I don't think this is the highly outcome, anywhere down here from a price point of about 54.95 up here to about 55.08 would be a point of interest. I'd love to see the market come down to here, start the firm up, and then I can look for a buying opportunity for a move up higher. That would be ideal, but keep in mind the markets do not care about what we see as ideal, but notice this minus development right here also correlates 
with the minus development area on the weekly profile. So again, fingers crossed, we can get the markets to sell off down towards out those areas to give us that great buying opportunity. All right, let's take a look at some of the economic news we had come out. 8.30, we had the unemployment claims. We came in hot, 249,000. I want you guys to look at this graph right here. Which way is the unemployment claims ticking? Are they ticking up or are they ticking down? And that is exactly why j Powell is gonna be cutting rates because the overall economy is slowing down regardless what the media wants you to believe. We come over real quick. We look at the volume profile levels for the overnight. We see the NASDAQ is trying to come back down and we have value area low coming in at 19,582.75. The point of control will come in at 19,625.50 and value area high will come in at 19,674.50. So if we can get back below value area low, then I wanna target these candle bodies which come in at a price point of 19,523. Anything below that, I want to retarget the point of control at 19,472 and a quarter. Then below that, we can go ahead and look at the composite profile. See, okay, can we make a run towards this distribution area and maybe into our juicy minus development area? We jump over and we take a look at the S&P 500 and we see value area high comes in at 5592.25. The point of control will come in at 5582.25. Value area low coming at 5578.25. Now, as I'm looking at this, what am I expecting? Well, one, if we get back above value area high, I want to look for higher prices. But if we get above it, then we start coming back down. I want to be on the sell side. Or if we start breaking value area low, I want to be on the sell side of the trade. I want to target down here towards these candle bodies at a price point of about 5562. Anything below that price point, look over here at the daily profile and say, okay, can we make it down towards 5541? And more importantly, can we make it down to our juicy minus development area when this area down here would be one heck of a gift the market could give us today? If we measure our Fibonacci retracement, notice that comes in right in between the 50 and 61.8 Fibonacci levels. So fingers crossed to see if the market can dip down into our nice juicy level this morning. If you guys wanna learn how to trade double bottoms using order flow, make sure to watch this video right here.